Hello, everybody, and welcome uh, to the talk that is called The Design System Story. I'm Gil Fink, uh, your host, and I want to start with a quiz. Let's get ready. Are you ready? What do you see here on the screen? If you shouted out a gray apple, you're right. If you shouted out apple logo, you're right. Let's go on. What is this? If you said three nines with different colors, red, uh, uh, yellow, and green, or you said Chrome logo, you are correct. Now, what is missing here? I'll give you a few seconds to think about it. Okay, so if you said the BMW logo is missing, you are right. And this brings me to an interesting concept because once you see every or most of the BMW cars out there at the front, the grill looks the same. So we understand that even though we don't have the logo there in this picture, we, we distinguish and understand that it's a BMW because of the rare design that BMW has. And this brings me to the context of this session. A brand distinguished your product. And when you are creating a design system, it helps you distinguish your product from other products like the BMW grill that you saw here, okay? That distinguish uh, the BMW cars from other cars out there. So with that, let's talk a little bit about me. I'm Gil Fink. I'm Sparksys uh, CEO and a senior consultant. Sparksys is my, uh, my consulting company. Uh, we have only one employee, me, myself, and I. Uh, I'm a GDE, Google Developer Expert for Web Technologies in the last four years. I wrote back then in 2014, a a book called Pro Single Page Application Development. The concepts in the book are still relevant, but the book was written with, I will do it uh, quietly, with Backbone JS. Yes, with Backbone JS. Uh, Backbone JS uh, was the library that I used back then eight years ago. Today I'm using React and uh, sometimes Angular and Stencil and other frameworks and libraries that we are uh, modern frameworks and libraries that we use today. So what we're going to do in the next 45 minutes is the following. First of all, we will talk about design systems. Why should you care as a developer? Then we will talk about designers and developers because design systems are related to designers and we are developers, most of us. Uh, last but not least, we will create a component library using a tool called Stencil. Stencil is a compiler. Uh, and uh, another tool called Storybook. So bear with me and we will drill down in all the, for all the aspects uh, that I talked about. So let's start with what is a design system? A design system is something that uh, the designers in your companies uh, probably are doing, but in a whole, it's a set of common rules and principles and best practices that you are creating or so should I say designers in your company are creating to design the applications or the application that you are currently building. These designs are uh, created by eight core components. First of all, colors. You, if you remember the, the Chrome logo, we had red, yellow, and green, which are the main colors that Google is using in its design system, material design, design which is a design system that they exposes out there. And a lot of us, a lot of developers are using this design system uh, as part of their applications. Uh, design systems also include things like, like iconographic, uh, how icons look like and should be distinguished between different uh, applications. Elevation, the height that of components and width and things like that. Copy, if you need to copy different components or create copies of components, how they are created. 
typography, you are using margins and the spacing and the padding, how should the typography of each and every component be look like? Animation, how animations are going to be presented by us, the developers, whether it's is in, is out, is in and out and things like that. Layout, how should you lay out the, the, the web page or the component that you are currently building? whether it's a grid or if you're using Flexbox and things like that, this is, these things are chosen by you, a developer, but you get the design from someone outside your space, which is the designer. And of course, illustrations, how graphs and the diagrams and things will look like when you are, when you are presenting the application. And the idea is, why do we need this design system? Why companies like Google, Microsoft with Fluent UI uh, and other com big companies are using design systems is first of all, branding. Do you remember when you looked at the BMW, the grill looks the same uh, across different uh, cars? It's the same. Whenever you see some uh, application that uses material design, you distinguish that application from other applications, or if it's Fluent UI from Microsoft or other design systems from Twitter or Slack or whatever. Um, the idea is to create the same UX principles across all the applications that you're building in order to make those applications familiar to your, to your users. So if you, a user uses one application from your company and then it is, using he or she using a different application from your company, it will be easier for them to consume the application because the same UX principles will be applied the same in each and every application. And an uh, aspect of that is whenever we are talking about design systems, we are talking about shared component layers and we will talk deeply into this idea later on in this talk. So as I said, the responsibility for the design system is we, at the, your designer or your X uh, uh, teams in your company. And we're developers. Uh, so why should we care about it? Because you know, developers and designers in the real world, <laughs> it's a, a cat fight. Um, they're saying, they, I don't know if you had a lot of experience uh, talking with, uh, designers, but uh, I, as a, as a consultant, talk a lot of, uh, with designers and try to uh, fill the gap between designers and the developer teams in the companies that I consult for. And easy because designers talk with the, the ideas of uh, a design system, elevation, uh, how uh, iconography or illustrations should look like. And we as a developers, we talk with, uh, in concepts like, you know, grid alignment, flex box, and a lot of other things. So the idea is to create a common language between the designers in your, in your company and between the developers in the company. And how can we establish that? In most of the companies that I work with, uh, we're using, uh, a common language or a common idea, which is called atomic design. Atomic design is an idea that uh, came uh, by Brad Frost. You can find that in the link at the bottom in the entire book that Brad Frost uh, published a few years ago about how to make a common language between developers and, and UX the, uh, teams or UI teams. Uh, from between developers and designers. And the idea is take some concept from chemistry and talk with those concepts in mind in order to make a common language. So let's talk about the five parts of an atomic design, which are atoms, molecules, organisms, templates, and pages. So like in chemistry, an atom is the smallest or the, the, the smallest part of, or particle in an entire design system. If I need to talk about atoms in applications, in web applications, it's an HTML element like a label, an input, a button, 
a checkbox or uh, anything else which is have some behavior and a look and feel which is very very uh, easy to understand now whenever we want to build on top of atoms or go up the into in the hierarchy of uh, of the atomic design we'll go to the second part which is molecules what are molecules like in chemistry a molecule is the combination of two or more atoms together which are creating a, a new functionality for example what you see in this uh, in this slide is uh, a search part or search area inside our your web application it includes a label search the site an input uh, for the search and a button and whenever you click on the button probably we, you will send some request to the server or anything else for a designer they are creating a molecule that includes a few atoms and this is how we talk with them on top of molecules we have organisms a, an organism is a, a couple of or uh, sorry a couple of molecules and uh, atoms built together in, or baked together to establish a different functionality for example a header in your application can be an organism footer a data grid that a grid that shows some data these things are organisms and once you understand that you can go and say to a designer um, the organism the header that you created uh, looks very peculiar let's think about how we can change it to be to, to look better uh, you can go and you can uh, uh, talk about the things that the designers are creating now let's move on from chemistry and let's talk about templates the, in the hierarchy of uh, the application a template is um, how a page look like with all the organisms inside of it without any content okay it's a template for the page the whenever you add content to the page the page won't look like the template because the content uh, is going to fill some parts and you will through the design system understand how to uh, you know uh, change the height and width and the relations between components uh, in the template of course you can talk about a template for mobile for uh, 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 desktops and uh, for you know big uh, tvs and screens um, now at the end of the hierarchy we have pages in the design system and a page is an instance of a template that includes some content so this is the, the idea of a page you have a, the, uh, this is a, a home page for some website and it includes some uh, videos and uh, some images and a lot of text and this is how a page will look like in your application now that we established a common language between designers and between us the developers let's talk about component libraries how they relate to design systems so in most companies the design system will be implemented as part of the of a component library the idea is to create the the a standard or a shared component layer that you can be reused in every application that you build inside your company and these standards will have the uh, the behavior and uh, the component will be a, you will you will be able to configure them and you will be able to determine how the component should be used as uh, as part of your shared component layer okay so we have some uh, component layer or a component library that you can use across different application in your company and these components will follow the design system uh, ideas or how the design will look like and with that let's start with a demo so what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you how to build um, a small component library using a tool called stencil stencil is a compiler that was created by ionic team 
the same team, uh, the same company that built Ionic framework. Uh, the, the idea of the compiler is that you write some code in TypeScript and JSX. If you're familiar with TypeScript and you're familiar for, with JSX, you will feel very comfortable using the, the tool. And you will use Stencil compiler in order to compile the component that you write into web components. If you're not familiar with the concept of web components and web components API, it's native components that uh, are created using a native API that exists in your browser. And the idea is that you can consume web components in each and every framework that you are currently using because they are native in the browser. That means that if you're using Angular, React, Vue, Svelte, or whatever, you can consume web components that were created using Stencil, okay? So with that in mind, what we are going to do is let's start and create our simple component library. I've started by doing npm init stencil beforehand because I don't want you to, uh, to um, run this, uh, uh, this command and generate the, the solution because uh, it will take a few minutes because you after you generate the solution, you will have to do npm install and I don't want you to stay with me for a couple of minutes up until npm install will finish. So I've already done npm init stencil and I called my, uh, my uh, project my Dino components and I created a component library, a stencil component library. And what we're going to do is uh, once stencil uh, generated ev everything uh, for me, it generates some uh, component, example components. So let's take a look at it for a few seconds and then let's move on and and build our own component. So in Stencil, you're using decorators to explain to Stencil compiler that this is going to be, this class, my component is going to be a component. It's uh, if you're coming from Angular background, you will feel familiar because Angular uses uh, decorators a lot. And what uh, this class instance is going, instances are going to be uh, uh, used as my component. This is going to be the tag, the HTML tag that I'm going to use. The component will use some CSS file um, and shadow means that you want to be or to create a component inside shadow DOM. Uh, it's another concept of web components. I uh, encourage you to go and check what it means. In a wall, it's encapsulation of content of a component. Uh, and its style um, um, and uh, API how to do that, okay? For a stencil component, if you want shadow DOM, you just put the pipe shadow true and that's it. And if we look at the component uh, implementation, you can see that we have a decorator for props. Props are the attribute that the component is going to expose. We are exposing first, middle, and last. A uh, component can have in its class functions <clears throat> and the each and every stencil component has a render function that returns a JSX. So if you're coming from React background, you will be familiar with the JSX. It's a syntax of HTML inside of uh, JavaScript that is compiled to uh, uh, JavaScript code later on, okay? So with that, if I want to use this, uh, my component, all I have to do is do this, this thing, my component um, with the attributes first, last, uh, or whatever, and that's it, okay? And now I can run this index uh, file and see the output. But we're not here for seeing a, a generated component. Let's create our own component, okay? So Stencil comes with, um, uh, command called generate, okay? So let's run npm run generate. And let's create our Dino button. Dino button is going to be a dinosaur button, okay? Our component library is going to be a, a component uh, uh, library for dinosaurs components, okay? So I'm running npm uh, run generate and 
you can see that the, I can generate the, 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 the entire code with style sheets, with the tests, with the end-to-end -end, uh, testing and things like that. I'll just press enter to generate the component here. And <clears throat> now we will wait until the code will, or will refresh. Where it generated this uh, install. Okay, so it generated this uh, this thing in an, another place. I'm sorry for that. So let's do it again. npm run generate dnr button and let's press enter. And voila, we need to, we will see here our generated code. Cool. Um, here is the Dino button stub that the uh, Stencil Generate created uh, for us. And I want to change this to this code here. So this code here is going to, to be a Dino button, uh, which is wired to a Dino button CSS, which we'll, we will implement using the design system ideas uh, that we got from our designers. Um, the Dino button is going to get a text property and um, some event handler. Um, <clears throat> and in, inside the Dino button, we have uh, some anchor and some SVG that will generate something very interesting. Wait and see, and you will see that. And we're using JSX and we just put as part of the button uh, the spam with the text that we got here from the output as an attribute. Now we can go to the CSS part and let's write some CSS code, okay? So we're creating the Dino button according to the design that we got with the colors that we got from the, our designers and some box shadow and some padding that the SVG uh, icon that we are going to use is going to show us. And with that, let's change this HTML file. And I don't want to show the example component that uh, we got from Stencil. I want to add my Dino button with a text click, click me. And whenever the DOM is, was loaded, I'm going to search the Dino button and I'm going to wire a click method, just, which is going to just put in the console Dino button clicked, okay? So let's save everything and let's do npm run start. And I'm starting the, develop, the development environment of Stencil. And if it's, I did everything correctly, we are going to see our Dino button with a, wait for it, wait for it. A T-Rex icon. Yay. Let's open the developer tools and let's go to the console and let's click the Dino button and the event handler was fired and we got the console log. Cool. But we have a problem here. And the problem is I don't want to write an index.html file in my component library and use it to, to look at my component. I want a big environment, a lab environment for my components. How can I do that? And the answer is a tool like Storybook. What is Storybook? Storybook is a UI development environment that can help you to get a lab environment and to show your components inside some lab environment and visualize different states of the components uh, and interact with them. How do you do that? First of all, you install Storybook in any project. If you're going to do NPX SB in it, Storybook will try to figure out what is the, uh, the framework that you are using currently in your application and will try to get uh, the storybook relevant code for that framework. For example, if you're running React, it will under try to understand that you're running React and then it will give, 
uh, add Storybook for React. <clears throat> you can also help Storybook if you know the, the, the type of the framework that you're using, and you can do npx sb in it and give it the flag type with some type, for example, React. In our case, because Stencil is generating web components, uh, we are going to use the flag type HTML in order to create the storybook content. After the CLI, the command line interface that uh, you run, npx sb in it, you can already start the storybook development environment using npm run storybook. Then uh, for each and every story that you create, it will appear inside storybook. And how do you create stories? The story is just a visualization or a test for the component state. You are creating a template, uh, which is the code that the storybook knows how to understand and use. And then you bind to it some content, arguments, or anything else, event handlers or whatever, and you will get the output inside the lab environment of Storybook. So with that, let's add the Storybook to our application. Okay, so I've already done npm npx sb init with the flag type HTML. I've done that because it will take something like 10 minutes for a storybook to run and add all the relevant content. I don't want you to sit here for 10 minutes and wait for that to happen. And because of that, uh, I've, I've run the, the command already. And once you you will open your, your project after the command of uh, npx sb init run, you will see that you get a dot .storybook folder. And under the source, you will get a few example stories that Storybook will generate for you to, you know, understand how to use Storybook. <clears throat> and Storybook will also add a few commands into your uh, scripts. For example, Storybook, the npm run Storybook will run a Storybook server. And npm run build Storybook will build the entire lab environment and you will be able to deploy it to a web server, okay? So think about it. Uh, we will talk a little bit about why you would want to do that in after this demo. Now, as I said, we're working with, uh, with the stencil and I want to Storybook to show um, the web component. So I have to do a few things in order to uh, enable that. The first thing that I need to do is run npm run build. Why I'm doing that? Because once I'm running the build of Stencil, Stencil is going to generate a folder called loader. The loader folder includes a few uh, um, functions and code that will help me to run things inside, inside Storybook. So I need to build my uh, application before I'm doing that. And you can see here is the loader Code. Now, once I've done that, I can go to the preview of Storybook and add the, these lines of code. First of all, import define custom elements from the loader and then define custom elements. What is going to happen here is Storybook uh, preview will load all the custom elements inside your environment. That means that whenever you want to use uh, Storybook with uh, stencil, you have to run this command. And whenever you update your components, you will have to build the in, entire solution. So the definition of the elements you created will be handled by the preview of story. Now that we created the, the environment or we uh, may, made the, everything ready, let's go to the component of the Dino button. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new file, a new JSX file, uh, and I will call it Dino button dot stories, which is the convention in Storybook and Storybook will be able to find the file and then use it later on. Now I generated the file and sorry, and here is the story for my Dino component. 
okay? I'm going to create a template with the Dino button uh, and it's going to get the argument text uh, from the arguments that are delivered to my story, okay? And this, this part is something that you have to do. You have to bind uh, the template to some object, okay? And here we, we can see it in lines uh, eight to, to 10 that we are setting the arguments for the text. Now, if everything works as expected, if I do npm run storybook, the storybook server, the development server will load. It will grab all the stories here because we have a storybook configured to find stories under a stories folder. And it will also grab the story for my Dino button because Storybook knows to search for the postfix of stories inside your files uh, uh, folders and to add it to the Storybook. That means that we will have a look. We can we will be able to look at both the stories that Storybook generated for us and the story uh, for our Dino button. Okay, let's make it smaller okay um so voila here is a storybook storybook as i said it's an app that visualizes uh, your components and help helps you by uh, giving you a lab environment to test your components okay how does it look like this is the preview uh, uh, area and i can go to the dino button that storybook found and voila here is the, the Dino button with the, all the configurations that I did uh, beforehand, okay, the story. Now, as I said, it's a lab, lab environment and you can test the, the states or state of everything inside your lab environment. That means that you can see that I'm changing the code here, uh, the, sorry, the text here, and it is reflected inside the preview. Now, other things that you, might want to think about. Storybook can help you by uh, exposing actions, uh, event handlers, and anything else. Um, and not it doesn't not doesn't, but uh, it's not including only a canvas. It in, it is including docs here. The docs here, the docs tab enables you as a developer to go and see the code for the current state of the component. That means that if I'm a new uh, uh, developer in your company and you as a senior developer want to uh, help me understand how components are working in the shared component layer or in your component library, you can send me to the storybook server if you installed that and look at the code that was generated uh, for each and every state of the component, okay? And here you have um, things that can be customized uh, to show the description of uh, each and every property that we have and if it has uh, some default uh, and what control it is going to, to show you. Um, uh, you can have date pickers and uh, uh, object visualization, inside storybook and things like that okay it's a very very uh, big tool and i encourage you to go to their documentation and learn more about how to use storybook with that let's move on and let's understand what is the gain from having storybook inside our component library and how it relates to design systems and designers so storybook can expose your component library as a web application. You can do story uh, npm run uh, build storybook. You get some code and you can just put it inside a web server and browse through it. Now, in a lot of companies that I work with, what we're doing is we're having a dedicated server for the component library we have. And we put uh, in that server, the build of storybook. And then we give we gave the UX team and UI team a link to Storybook to that the, 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 to that server, and they can go 
and they can play with the, the, the components from the design system and they can argue about things that aren't implemented as they thought or aren't uh, or about things that the, you did implement it, uh, but um, they think that should be changed a little bit or uh, things like that. And that means that other than having a common language like atomic design, we can talk about the components that in a lab environment and they can look at it and can do visual testing on the components that you created. More than that, as I said, Storebook can be very helpful whenever you have junior developers that comes into your team and you want to present them how you can use the components from the design system. And what can we do other than that? What next? We can wrap the entire component library and publish it. You can go from here and you can deploy your component library into your package manager, either NPM, Cloudinary, or whatever, uh, Artifactory, whatever. And then other people will be able to use it. Uh, for example, uh, a lot of us are probably using material uh, design by using some material UI component library. Uh, so you, if you created a design system component library inside your company, you can expose it that others will be able to use it. Um, you should expose the storybook output to your UX UI teams. And uh, by doing that, you can create a common language and to be able to talk about things that you're doing. And of course, make your component library richer. Uh, Dino button is only one component and I'm not expecting a component library to be built with only one component. You can create other Dino dash components uh, uh, in your design system. So with that, building a design system is a necessity for every company uh, that I work with. And creating component library can help you achieve your design system goals. I want to thank you for uh, having me. And now you can go to the Q&A uh, section. And uh, if you have any questions about the, the talk, I will try to answer them. So, OK, we have a question from Emily. Does Storebook exclusively work with TypeScript? So the answer is no. You don't have to work with TypeScript. I worked with TypeScript because Stencil is exclusively working with TypeScript. But if you prefer using JavaScript, then go ahead, use JavaScript. And Storybook knows how to work with JavaScript as well. If you have any other questions, um, feel free to write them in the Q&A. Okay, um, there are questions in the chat. Well, we use mostly Storybook. Okay, so in mostly you will going you are going to use Storybook as part of a component library. I'm not encouraging you to put your entire application inside Storybook. That's not a good idea. Uh, if we are talking about atomic design then in Storybook, you will have only the atoms and your molecules, okay? Things like organisms, headers, footers, and the uh, data grids or things of big uh, organisms shouldn't be part as, as of your component library, but rather uh, they are going to be a part of your application. And you don't want to put application parts as, part of storybook. I hope that that's answered the questions, the, the question they just. OK. 
Okay, oh, uh, I, I can see um, storybook only for front-end components. So yes, storybook is for components that you create for your front-end because it's a lab environment for components. Okay, so if I hope that answered the question. Any, any other questions? Does Storybook work with React Native or Expo? So from my experience, there was some plugin for Storybook for React Native, but I don't know if it's still being uh, uh, developed. I, I know for sure that uh, React, you, you have a plugin for React in Storybook, but I don't, I, I don't think that uh, we, we have plugin for uh, React Native. Maybe I'm mistaken, but in the past, there wasn't any plugin for React Native. There are plugins for HTML, meaning web components, uh, React, Angular. I know that there are plugins for Svelte. Um, and um, I think that covers most of the big frameworks. I don't, I don't know if uh, uh, you have any React Native uh, uh, plugin for Storybook. And if yes, uh, I can check it and later on. And if you want, send me a, a DM uh, to my Twitter account at Gilfink, and I will try to uh, check it and get back to you if you have that. Any other question? Uh, I'm putting in the chat, if you want to follow me in Twitter or DM me, uh, I'm trying to be responsive. Uh, um, if you have any other questions that you uh, were shy to ask right now or things like that. Um, and if there are no other questions, I will give you another minute if somebody wants to, to ask any question. And if not, um, What was your first interview experience? Oh, cool. So uh, it was, I think, 20 years ago. Um, and I was interviewed for, for a junior developer uh, um, role. And unfortunately, I didn't got the job because uh, somebody thought that I'm not uh, 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 a good candidate, um, but um, how was it? Um, they ask a lot of uh, algorithms, uh, algorithm questions. Uh, it was for SAP company, um, and it was like uh, one full day of interviews and uh, uh, dynamic groups uh, with other interviewees that came to that uh, at, at the same day. Um, and that 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 was it. Uh, but uh, the second company that I went to to the interview, they hired me, and they thought that I'm good enough. And you know, uh, twenty years uh, later, I'm talking about uh, uh, things related to development, and um, happily doing that. Any other question? Thank you, Steve. Okay, so I think it's a wrap up. I want to thank you for coming and uh, being with me. And I wish you a good evening or a good morning or whatever you are currently in the world, evening, morning, afternoon. And thank you for being here. Goodbye.